And welcome back. Scientists in the U.S. and Switzerland have announced an amazing revelation that supports the biblical story of Adam and Eve. Researchers say a new study shows all modern humans are descendants from a common father and mother who appeared on the scene 100 to 200,000 years ago after a cataclysmic event almost wiped out the human race. In an interview on Fox & Friends, Dr. Robert Jeffries, pastor of First Baptist Church of Dallas, said the scientists are still not fully embracing the Genesis account of creation. We know from the Bible that in fact we do have a common father and mother, Adam and Eve, who are not the result of tadpole mutations, but of divine creation. And that all life is the result not of a big bang, but of a big God. You know, it takes more faith to believe in the evolutionist theory of the origin of life than the biblical uh, creation account. And our health reporter, Lori Johnson, joins us now to talk more about this. You do a lot of stories about genetics. What's your take on this one? Well, it's really fascinating because ever since scientists began mapping the human genome about 15 to 20 years ago, we've learned all this information about DNA. We solve crimes using DNA. DNA is very, very reliable. So this is really great. It's almost quote unquote proof mm -hmm. that the Bible is true. And my own personal take on it is I hope it's going to cause some people to believe who otherwise wouldn't have. We see in the Bible that one of Jesus' disciples, Thomas, mm -hmm. wouldn't believe until yeah. he had proof of it, mm -hmm. and he got that proof, Indeed. and then he believed. <laughs> of course, we know that Jesus said, blessed are people who believe Without who seeing. aren't yeah. seeing the proof, and that's where I fall in mm -hmm. this category. I always believed in Same a biblical here. account mm -hmm. of Adam and Eve, but now this is sort of proof, and there is some sort of cataclysmic event yeah. that happened before this happened. And uh, a lot of scientists are saying, well, that's the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And uh, some Christians say, no, there was no such thing as a Big Bang. Other Christians, for example, Franklin Graham, say, yeah, there could have been a Big Bang created by, by God, God yes. <laughs> that caused all this to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm in that camp, too. Yeah. But it's really fascinating to see all these things uncover Indeed. that we see in the Bible. And another thing recently, and I was talking about this on the 700 Club earlier this week, and for our viewers who missed it, it's on our, our webpage, mm -hmm. cbnnews.com, is this whole notion of epigenetics, yes. where scientists find out that uh, you can have bad behaviors like smoking or stress, and not only does it affect yourself in a genetic DNA type of way, mm -hmm. but your ancestors, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren way down the line, mm -hmm. and scientists are like, oh, this is such a brand new revelation, and those of us who are familiar with the Bible are like, mm, not yeah. really. <laughs> I mean, the Bible talks about mm -hmm. the sins of the Father yes. being passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. So once again, yeah. scientists are proving the Bible to be correct. And, you know, a lot of people say science and uh, Christianity are opposing poles, but mm -hmm. not really. No, the more you dig, the more you find that's not the case indeed. What are some other scientific studies that carry biblical tie-ins, you think? Well, I just keep uncovering these. And mm -hmm. again, you know, the scientists are like, oh my gosh, we can't believe we figured that we found this out. And I'm like, you know, anybody who reads the Bible knows this is true. For example, they're saying that uh, stress is one of the worst things for your health. Mm -hmm. And, um, one thing that relieves stress, one of the best things for your health, is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we know that Jesus commands us to forgive. Yes. Another thing is not to worry. We know on the Sermon of the Mount, mm -hmm. Jesus says, don't worry. And we That's know right. that worry is so bad for your health. Absolutely. Uh, giving, good mm -hmm. for your health. I mean, the list goes on and on. And we know that God loves us mm -hmm. and he commands us and advises us to behave in a certain way for our own good because it's good for us. Absolutely. So all these things that fasting is another thing that's yeah. great for your health. Mm -hmm. Scientists are now discovering this, but you know, we've been, God has been commanding us to do this for mm -hmm. thousands of years. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Real quick, uh, does it seem like sci non-believing non scientists have become sort of Christian apol apologists, if you will? They don't even want you. Uh, what, you know what, uh, about this most recent discovery about Adam and Eve, what I found most interesting was one of the scientists said this, this conclusion is very surprising and I fought against it mm -hmm. as hard as I could. In other words, this is a scientist yeah. who didn't want this to be true, yeah. but, but it is. It and is. so, you know, that testimony speaks volumes. Indeed, indeed. God promises to watch over his word to perform it. Indeed, Lori, thank you. You're welcome. Well, still ahead, CBN sits down with a CBS White House reporter who says the mainstream media has a credibility problem and how he says they need to fix it. 
Yesterday was the first White House briefing in weeks since a CNN reporter was stripped of his press credentials following a heated exchange with President Donald Trump. The White House fight with CNN highlights the growing dissatisfaction with media in America. CBN's David Brody spoke with CBS White House reporter Major Garrett about the state of the media and his new book about the Trump administration. It would be an understatement to say that President Trump's first two years has been a roller coaster. And that's why Major Garrett's new book pretty much sums it up with the title, Mr. Trump's Wild Ride, the thrills, chills, screams, and occasional blackouts of an extraordinary presidency. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, would be much better. I, I, a major driver of this ride has been the love-hate relationship between the White House and the mainstream media, or as President Trump calls them, fake news. Garrett says it's not just the president who has a problem with the media. When the public is asking those of us who are frontline reporters who can they believe, they're essentially saying, we're not sure we can believe you. That's our problem of our creation. And we've got to own up to that and we've got to reverse that trend line. That's one reason the battle between CNN's Jim Acosta and the Trump administration over press passes and decorum has Garrett's attention. I am as what they say in the legal community, an interested party. <laughs> Because I work there. I'm, 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 I'm on the same front row that Jim Acosta is and that CNN is. Garrett says it's a fight that Trump and CNN President Jeff Zucker want. But I do think Jeff Zucker and Donald Trump want to have this fight on behalf of not just these serious and underlying legal questions, but on their own reputational relationship to one another. This week, the White House laid out certain ground rules for reporters during press conferences. While Garrett sees himself as a neutral observer, he does believe the Trump administration has a good point. The CNN position is also to a certain degree absolute, that there's no limits on the decorum in the White House. Well, I don't believe that as a reporter. So there are limits. I've exercised them. Garrett explains an encounter during a Rose Garden event. He had the microphone in his hand, ready to ask a question, and then Trump said no and called on the reporter behind him. Was I giving up my First Amendment rights? No. The president said, no, not you. It's his press conference. That example is just one of many that keeps Garrett covering this wild ride. As a passenger, whether as a correspondent or author, he felt it was also his job to cover the ups and downs responsibly. I'd covered three presidents before, and it felt to me as if the country was getting the impression that because this is so different and comes at us so differently, maybe the typical powers of the presidency don't still exist. Well, they do. And maybe things aren't getting done. They are. Garrett's reporting style follows the just the facts trademark. And his book follows that example, recounting the issues with no dreaded anonymous sources. Everyone's quoted by name. Everyone is quoted by their title and by what they saw and what they saw happening. Purposeful. Purposeful. There are books about Trump written for the pro-Trump crowd. There are yes. books written for the anti-Trump crowd. Yes. This book is written for fill in the blank. I've told my best friends as I was writing the book, my greatest fear is that it will not love the president enough and it will not hate the president enough. You are terrible. That is not you are really you terrible. don't mean that. You don't Go ahead. Mean that. No, I do mean it. And as Trump runs the country, Garrett will continue to report on one of the most important times in political history. We had 113 million Americans participate in the midterms. 49.2% participation rate, higher than any year since 1966. This country cares about this time politically, and we're sorting it out. Garrett hopes voters will look to his book that tries to do just that, sort it all out in a fair and honest way. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Still ahead, everyone's favorite basketball-loving nun is back in the news. Coming up, how Loyola Chicago honored its biggest fan. Loyola Chicago basketball team is honoring its biggest fan, a 99-year-old nun known around the court as Sister Jean. Her full name, Sister Jean Dolores Schmidt, was awarded by the team with her own ring from the Final Four tournament Tuesday. She received the ring on the court before the team took on Nevada. Sister Jean has served as the chaplain for Loyola basketball's team for more than 20 years now. ESPN says she's the team's most tweeted about member of the organization. Congratulations, Sister Jean. So nice to see. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can get more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about always at CBNNews.com. We love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do that by emailing Newswatch at CBN.com. Make it a wonderful Wednesday, everybody. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.